Hi, and welcome to the February 29th uh, uh, Massachusetts Pirate Party member meeting. Um, my name is James O'Keefe, uh, resident of Somerville and captain of the party. Um, I'm joined today by... Who else is here? Joseph Onorowski of Lowell. Steve Revelak, Arlington, Massachusetts. Wonderful. Thank you for joining. So, um, it's, we, so we, we, I mean, we'll, we'll actually, I don't have anything to re specific to report. Um, except that March, so, through our friends at Digital Fourth, um, Somerville had a meeting to review, to, to accept the mayor and the police department's surveillance reports. I'm still trying to ascertain exactly what happened at that. It was at one of the subcommittees, so it'll go to the full city council in order to approve it. So if there's anything we don't like, we'll have a, hopefully another chance to do that. Um, March 5th, uh, Cambridge is having a similar review. Um, and so we'll send an email out to, um, to folks in Cambridge asking them to attend that meeting. <clears throat> um, and then at a national level, um, there's efforts to uh, roll back Section 702, if I recall correctly, um, the various surveillance measures and the Biden administration is calling for uh, just passing it as is and giving another renewal for a year. So um, that's something in the past that we've opposed. So I got to reach out to the National Party and ask them to sign on uh, to opposing renewal of Section 702. Um, <clears throat> so anything else to report from the two of you? Yes. Yeah, so, so there was a little bit of news coming out that I, I generated and, uh, and I sent to the National Committee and the uh, it was about a state suing an Amish farmer and uh so the uh i sent it to the mass pirates and drew was able to actually give me some context on that so um and even though it's it's them going after a raw milk production from an amish farmer so apparently in the state of pennsylvania in order to sell raw milk you have to have a permit to sell raw milk because people could quote unquote get sick of by raw organic milk. However, they don't seem to have any problem selling stuff with all the chemicals in it. So I think that just blows my mind a little bit, but if this farmer manages to win, that would be groundbreaking set in precedent. If this farmer loses, then it's business as usual. So Kind of hope he wins, though. Well, specifically, what are the requirements? I mean, usually it's pasteurization, which is just heating the milk in order to kill any pathogens, right? Uh, pasteurization in hormones or homogenization, which is just which is just mixing mm -hmm. it. That's all yeah, homogenizing. Blending, right. Yeah, blending it so it's not lumpy. Um, right. So or to blend. be, you know, usually I think what, if I recall correctly, what the the fats rise, the cream rises, right? Yeah, was it wheat and curds? So and all that. I actually, yeah. So I actually like taking heavy cream and reversing that process and then whipping it into butter, which is exactly the opposite of the butt process. So you whip it till it turns into butter. Um, whip it good. Ah. Uh, uh, just got to that song. Um, but yeah, so the fact that the, they have a farmer 
they're suing an Amish farmer because he's selling like something or- organic food. Like it just kind of it caught my attention, and I figured I'd bring it to everyone's attention because there seems to be a pretty sustained attack on where our food comes from. And it kind of blows my mind a little bit. And so this is another thing in a long line of why are they attacking our food production? So I, why I, is, is government be, agents? Yeah. My, my guess would be because they don't want people to get sick, but you know, I understand there are, there are, people have different perceptions of that. Um, yes. Thank you, Joe. Uh, So in terms of, uh, uh, do you have any update on U.S. Pirate Party issues? Uh, Currently we're trying to, or I think Liz is trying to get us to put a more sustained effort in revitalizing the platform committee. Um, Okay. Unfortunately, I did not attend the last meeting just due to... um, due to the fact that I fell asleep. I don't have any good excuse. I mean, sleep is pretty important. It is. Uh, So I do apologize for that. And I will try and attend this Sunday's meeting. All right. Thank you. I know on an international level, there is one thing we did decide on for the international level. This mm-hmm. wasn't last meeting, but the meeting before that. So where we stand on the international level for the Pirate National Committee is that the the PPI has agreed to let the United States Pirate Party stay, um, have us be an honorary member. They're not going to necessarily require us to do anything. At the same time, they're not going to um, ask for anything ask us of anything we're there mostly as an honorary giving them legitimacy because we're a part of them and giving us legitimacy so instead of be just going down to observer status um we did vote and did all agreed that so long as they're not being so long as they're not asking too much of us um we'll continue to send delegates um i know liz is very active on the international stage she does stuff down at the u.n on behalf of the Pirate Party, we don't want to undermine her efforts. And at the same time, um, you know, keep those bonds that keep us, because we do share all the same ideology, and we all have the same common goal of making the world a better place through honest and open dialogue and, and accountability. So I think fundamentally we were looking to go observer status um, just because we were getting frustrated with the whole process of it. But I think we've just uh, we've all come to an agreement. So the the PNC and the PPI are now um, looking to move forward and be good on that front. So that's some good news. Good. Thank you. Um, so yeah, speaking of that, I mean, it might be useful to just try and have like a monthly get together with pirates wherever we can find them um i mean i can reach out to folks i know in the german pirates or uh the dutch pirates um i was in ireland recently and sadly i i've not found any irish pirates either north or in the republic um so yeah, I mean, that would be kind of a nice to share ideas. I mean, I know when I met with Dutch pirates, they had a lot of good ideas, and the German pirates, too. So, I mean, bringing so back the pirate beer might be a good pirate. idea. Sorry? Uh, Say that? Sorry, Steve, yeah. go ahead. No, I think you and I cut each other off. What were you saying? Oh, I apologize, Jamie. I thought that was Steve. Um, I was thinking maybe we could bring back the pirate beer again. That seemed to be going good for a while. That's a good idea. It would also be a good thing for the National Party, too, just as a social event, not just the business meetings every 
every you know every uh, Sunday. Well, do you want to make one of the pirate newses um, instead of doing world topics? Make it into a, a pirate beer. Invite all of the uh, invite all of the international community, and we can just get drunk and talk. That's an idea. I think That's it might be a little late for them. Right, because we tend to do that at like seven thirty, and they're like five or six or more hours ahead of us. So maybe, maybe Australians, <laughs> we, we, you know, met with the president of the Australian Pirates who came out and visited us. Um, so maybe, maybe them. Well, if I do get going with the whole campaign and start really cranking away, maybe towards the end of that, we could wrap it up with a pirate beer. Then just do a long event where we're online for a significant amount of time and, you know. We should certainly get together and celebrate that. You know. Successes and failures. Absolutely. All right, so more socializing. Um, so uh, f- on election updates, so the tokens were created, the ballots were sent out. Uh, far- par- people have until uh, March 3rd to return ballots. And then, uh, Steve, I know you, you, you will handle removing the tokens. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know, our system is every uh, – supporter member uh, who is sent a ballot will get a token. You put that token into the ballot. We don't look at your, the to- what a token is associated with you. Um, we don't keep records of that after the ballots are done, uh, after balloting is done. So we don't know who voted for what, which is as it should be, you know, that Australian secret ballot. So. Um, um yep. I do have a question. Mm-hmm. So uh somebody asked this question on the from the National Pirates, but I figure it would be a good question for the Massachusetts Pirates. Um what is your opinion on the the US debt? I mean my opinion? <laughs> yeah, I mean your opinion or Opinions in general about the U.S. debt: Should we pay it off? Can we pay it off? Jamie's the economist. This is it. this is this is right up his alley. <laughs> oh, um, I, I would say that the debt is a debt that we owe ourselves, and um, taking and and so the concept of every time I hear that, yeah. So, uh, uh, as I said, I think on Twitter to Hong Pong, uh, every de- every time I hear someone complain about, oh, we've got so much debt, this is awful, I- I- I'm left with the, they're really just an austerity-minded person who wants us to cut back on spending so they can go and cut taxes even more. Uh, so the rich get richer and the rest of us suffer. I mean, there's useful services that are purchased with those. I mean, ideally, we would have national health care, for example. Uh, you know, if you want to go and you want to have support services, whether that's a guaranteed income or um, national parks, uh, you're going to have to pay for it some ways. So, yeah, I mean, we could raise. If it, I never hear, I never hear these people who are the austerity-minded folks about having to pay off debt. They never want to raise taxes on the rich. So, you know, I hear it every couple of years, and uh, I mean, Japan has a debt that I think is at least two, maybe three times gross domestic product, and it hasn't exactly armed them. So, yeah. I mean, I'm more of a, 
uh, MMT kind of folk with, uh, you know, we need to, we have real resources that need to be used and money is just a number. And if we need to have money available to use those real resources so that we can fully employ everybody, then that's what it is. I mean, I, that's a long winded answer, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not worried about debt. Do people worry about debt so much when they buy a house? I mean, obviously, you know, if you don't have the income, you know, you don't buy too big a house, but it's like buying a house is considered an investment, you know, going and going into having the government go into debt in order to pay for vital services that people need, make sure everyone has health care, everyone can get educated, everyone has a place to live, potentially, our national defense, you know. <laughs> These are things yeah. you got to pay for. Yeah, and I mean, my my first instinct is if someone's concerned about the debt, are you concerned about, you know, what we're spending or what we're taking in? Because it's you have to think of both sides of the the balance equation. And when, you know, we do give significant tax breaks to high income earners, um, you know, yeah, you're really not worried about the debt. <laughs> yeah. Mm, touche. Is that your question, Joe? It does. Okay. It does. You know, I mean, one of the biggest reasons why I particularly want to go for the position and where I want to do most of my fighting for in what I hope will be my future political career is in the House of Commons, in, in the General Assembly, where I mainly look am looking to do that fight for the uh the budget and correcting things because i think a lot of the woes that we see today all start and end in the house the house of commons um and i think that if we can get the house of commons in order and get reason in the house of commons that that's really where the good fight is happening and you know a lot of the laws that are springing forth from the house of commons um I think that's really where the good fight needs to happen. And, you know, it might not seem like nearly as glorious of a role. It's not like Senator, it's not like president, it's not like mayor or governor, but honestly, where all the work that needs to be done, where all the laws need to be changed or tweaked, and it's right there. So, and that starts with the numbers. You want to know the truth about any situation, follow the numbers. So, here, here. Speaking of that, uh, if if you want to run for uh, the Massachusetts legislature, whether the the Senate or the House, um, you can run as a pirate. You have about eight more weeks in order to get on the ballot. Uh, we have a bunch of videos up at uh, masspirates.tv and uh, for how to get on the ballot and how to decide what office is the right one for you and what type of campaign you want to run. So um, check those out and um, we're always here uh, at masspirates.org to help you with that. Um, speaking of that, so plan, uh, yeah, one other thing about elections if for some reason, and, and I'll, we'll send an email before the ballot, before the polls close, but if for some reason um, you didn't get a ballot or you didn't get a token, contact us and we'll figure it out. We can send out individual ballots to individual people if necessary to, to fix things. Uh, so planning for 2024, I mean, we're in 2024, so yeah. Um, Steve, thank you for getting the list of city and town election contacts. I'll put together an email and start sending it out to them to get the list of voters. Um, and then send out a mail to our members about running and organizing locally. Uh, and with any luck in the next week or two, we'll start calling people. So, woohoo. 
Uh, and then the only other thing on the agenda, unless anyone wants to add anything, is uh, Pirate News, um, which is scheduled for this Sunday at 7.30 p.m., which is still good. Good for me. Likewise. Perfect. Uh, it's been, I think, two weeks. Has it been two weeks? Something like that. Uh, That's since we that. met. And um, some of the topics, I don't know if you've seen them. Apparently, I think there's a bunch of stadies that have been surreptitiously recording people. They were attempting to... If, my, if, I, if I read it correctly, uh, they were recording people they were attempting to bust for drugs by saying they wanted to buy drugs, and then they would record them and bust them. And they didn't happen to make those recordings available, you know, to the lawyers or to the defendants. So that's an issue. Uh, and also that came out, um, Wired Magazine uh, somehow managed to get a list of at least the general locations of all shot spotters in the United States. And there's a nice map uh, that they have up at their article. And so apparently there's shot spotters in Fall River. Um, Boston, of course, Cambridge, Somerville, I don't think Medford, maybe Medford, um, Chelsea, Revere, Springfield, Worcester, Pittsfield, uh, and probably one more, maybe Lowell, I, I, I forget, I'm not sure, um, I with lots of locations. Sorry, go, Joe. I'd be surprised if Lowell did not have one. I'm just not sure that they have the information. I, I forget if it's in the database, but it would it would make sense. I, I think they were, uh, but I'm just spacing on it at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, apparently they're not necessarily the specific locations, but they're like the general area. So if you have some GIS, some geographic information services chops and uh, or expertise and would like us to help, uh, would like to help us correlate those uh, so that we can maybe figure out where they are exactly, uh, do contact us at info at um, I know it's like they, they listed there was one in Franklin Park. Yes, Franklin Park in Boston. So I'm eager to go by there and start walking around uh, to see if I can see one of their shot spotters out there. Uh, and we can map it along with all the surveillance cameras we map at cctv.massparrots.org. So uh, I will be discussing those and, and whatever else um, folks bring up. Um, uh, any other topics to discuss? Uh, no, not in here. Time. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Joe and Steve. Um, I am going to get this recorded done oh yeah wrong uh so yeah so um and thanks for folks watching this we hope you found it uh helpful you're always welcome to to join these meetings go to massparrots.org and um by all means participate we'd love to hear what you have to say and uh, we'd love it. We'd love your help in uh, making Massachusetts pirate. So with that, you can find us at masspirates.org. Have a great week, and see you, folks. Bye. Yeah.